Hello everyone and welcome back! In the last lesson we built together the request that is going to fetch the offline page from the server. Now that we have the offline page, we need to store it somewhere. We are going to store it in a new type of browser cache. We are going to be using the browser cache API. This is a caching mechanism that is accessible via JavaScript and this is unlike the traditional caching mechanism. This means that this type of cache can be programmatically invalidated and it can be managed via JavaScript, which is not possible with the standard browser caching behavior that is based only upon HTTP headers and then the browser takes care of all the caching for us. Let's then see this new caching mechanism in action. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to start by opening the cache, then we are going to store the offline page, the response to the request that we made here, we're going to store it in this new type of cache. This way, in another part of our service worker, we will be able to serve the offline page in response to a failed HTTP request. Let's then cache the offline page. The first thing that we need to do is to open the cache. The caching API is also promise-based, like all the PWA-related APIs. So we are going to do caches.open, but the result of this call is going to be a promise. If the promise is successfully resolved, then we will have here a cache that we can use to store and delete items, but we will need to call a wait here so that the promise gets resolved. Now we need to pass in here the name of a particular cache. Let's for the moment call it app-cache. Now that we have the cache opened, let's store something in it. In order to do that, we are going to use the method cache.put. The first argument that we need to pass in is a request. So the key of the request, it's going to be, among other things, the full URL. And the second argument that we need to pass to the put method is going to be the value that we want to cache. In this case, we want to cache the response to this HTTP request, which contains the offline page. We could store many other things in the cache, including the JavaScript and the CSS files of the application itself, so that the next time we don't have to fetch it from the network. And that's exactly what we will be doing in an upcoming section of this course. Right now, let's start by caching the offline page and see how this works in practice. We're going to increment here the version of the service worker that we are running and we're going to load it because we want to see how can we inspect the content of the cache using the dev tools. Let's then switch over to the browser. We are going to reload our application and we're going to see what we have here installed. If we click on the service worker, we are going to see that indeed we have here version 6 and we have no errors on the console, so this means that we managed to populate the cache correctly. Let's confirm that. We are going to go here to the cache section of the dev tools. We are going to hit here this drop down and we are going to see here the new cache that we just created, app-cache. As we can see, the content that we have just cached, it's here. We can see that we have here one cache entry for offline.html. This is the path. This is the complete URL for this content type. And we can see here a couple of properties. For example, we can see at which time it was cached. We can also see the content that is cached. You can see here that we have here our offline page. Also, the headers that get returned to the browser are also cached. This new type of cache, the application cache, this is where we are going to be storing the multiple versions of our application. We are going to store here everything from the index.html to the multiple CSS bundles that the page needs to the JavaScript bundle that gets returned by the Angular CLI. Everything is going to be cached here. So the application cache is really a key component of a progressive web application. This is where the multiple versions of the application will reside on the client side. Notice that this is very different from the application cache. This is an ancient standard that we will not be using in this course. Right now, let's continue the implementation of our offline page functionality. We are going to intercept network requests and if one of those fail, we are going to serve the offline page. We can do that because we already have it here. Let's have a look at how can we do that. 